Good morning, good morning, good morning, and God bless all of you. Um, this is Prophetess Latasha Pratt, and we are here on the Ignite prayer call of Availing Ministries. Um, and excited um, to be here this morning and to have and welcome those of you who are joining us on the call this morning, and of course, those who will be joining later um, via the replay. I um, want to say welcome and thank God for you to all of God's kingdom citizens, whoever you are, um, and in whatever capacity that you serve, we are grateful, we are excited, we are humbled, we are in expectation um, this morning of what God is going to do on this call. I am very, very, very excited about um, this morning's prayer focus um, because it is a refresher um, for us to be reminded um, about what we're going to talk about today, um, about the love of God. And I know that may seem um, kind of generic because we hear so much about it, but I love the way God gives us refreshers um, on how, not only how he sees us, but most importantly, on how we view him. So um, let's get right into it. The prayer focus is entitled Dimensions, and we are taking our topic of discussion this morning from Ephesians, the third chapter. Um, the 14th through the 20th verse was my study, but I'm going to read starting at the 17th verse. That's Ephesians, third chapter. Um, and I'm going to start reading at the 17th and read through the 20th verse. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, our topic of discussion is dimensions, and we're taking our scripture at Ephesians 3. I'm going to begin reading at the 17th verse through the 20th verses. It says here, and I'm reading in the Amplified, may Christ through your faith actually dwell, which is to settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your heart. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on that love, that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints um, who are God's devoted people the experience of that love. What is the breadth or the width and length and height and depth of it? Speaking of his love. 19th verse, that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled through your entire being unto all the fullness of God, may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. 20th verse, now to him who by or in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do we know it as exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. Here in Amplified it says, and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Um, we thank God for the reading of the word once again. Um, our prayer focus is entitled Dimensions, and of course, it's based on um, taken right out of that 18th verse that be begins to give a description of just how much or the measure of how much God loves us. So let's start now then at um, the definition for dimension, and I chose a simple one. I don't want to get too complicated. So the definition for dimension is 
the measurement of something in physical space. So, for example, if you're getting something painted, you might give your painter every dimension of the room which is being painted. You know, you measure the height, you measure the depth, you measure the width of that space. But in addition to physical objects, dimension can describe something less tangible, such as the magnitude or extent of something, right? Um, we live in a physical world with four known space and time dimensions, which are length, width, height, or depth, and time. But however, we're going to be discussing um, the dimensions in re relations to God. And we know that God dwells in a different dimension, which is the spirit realm, and that is eternal. So the spirit realm, or the dimension God dwells in, far exceeds and it's more it's beyond our perception and it is beyond our physical sense, um, senses. So what am I saying with all of that stuff I just talked about? What I'm saying this morning is the, the route we're going to go here today is we're going to revisit the magnitude and the extent of the love of God, but we also want to challenge in this um, regard how we view him. We want to map the way he view us. Please mute your phones when you um, come on. God bless you, and thank you for joining us. But please self-mute so that we don't have any feedback. Thank you so much. Um, what we want to do this morning, um, as the Lord has been challenging us in the past few weeks, he's reminding us of what kind of God he is in our lives. But he's also challenging us that our faith and our expectation and our hope and our faithfulness match that consistency, match his faithfulness. Okay, so let's begin to discuss the depth of our faith as it relates to the fullness of God. All right, now let's go to the 18th verse. The 18th verse describes the limitless reach of the love God has for us. This is where we first see those dimensions mentioned, the breadth or the width, the length and depth and height. The dimensions of God's redeeming love are, as he mentioned, the breadth, the length, depth, and height. Okay, so now why is Paul pointing out um, these specific measurements or dimensions? Because he wants to take our imagination. He wants us to focus um, on something that is bigger than us, than we ourselves. Our um, dimensions or our measurements, right, this is something that we can relate to. So he used something that we can relate to when he wants to speak about the love of God for us and why. And right here, let me just parenthetically add, um, I know we started reading at the 17th verse, but if you read the entire third chapter from the first verse, what the conversation here is, Paul is specifically talking to the Gentiles, right? And he's letting them know that he, Paul, is specifically called to them. What is he called to do? He is called specifically to make them aware that God had them, even though they were not the original people of God, even though the Gentiles, who we are, um, were not the original um, people of God. We know that the Jews were the original chosen. But because of our faith in him, by accepting him as our Lord and Savior, that we now have been engrafted into the family. So here Paul is encouraging them to know that the same love that God had for the Jews, it has extended to us through our faith and receiving him as our Lord and Savior. So this is him encouraging them to um, view themselves um, according to how God sees them and then challenging us, uh, like I said before, to match um, the, that same uh, uh, limitless um, view of how we see God. So um, going back to the 18th verse, Right, we're now exploring um, the dimensions. Paul uh, intends to show the significance of Christ's exceeding great love for us. 
the unsearchable riches of his love. Now, the love of God, we know it's a, it's a very general term. So we want to challenge you this morning that whatever you feel or you think you know concerning the love of God, the vastness of it, that whatever we know that his love extends past all of the stuff that we've already experienced, through him, um, all of the many blessings that he's bestowed upon us, um, all of the times that he didn't allow us to suffer the consequence of our actions, um, but he showed us mercy and grace and compassion. All of this springs out of this limitless love of God, right? What does limitless mean? That means there is no boundary. There's no cut off um, to this love, right? So this love is higher, right, than heaven. It's deeper than hell. (laughs) It's longer than the earth and broader than the sea. Let whatever the vision that comes to you, whatever you can imagine in your mind, um, it's higher than heaven, it's deeper than hell, it's longer than the earth, it's broader than the sea. You can find that reference in um, the book of Job, the 11th chapter, 8 and 9 verses. So let's try to break it down this way. The breadth or the width of it, we may understand that his love is limitless and it reaches past any boundary or restriction. It's big. This is a big love. What boundaries on the re- or restrictions that it re- does it reach past? It extends past time, right? Because we know that in our in us in our time we have limits. We have um, dates set. We have expiration dates. Um, we have time set uh, for certain things at certain times, and then those things can expire, and then the time will be over, and then the time is past, and then we're concerned with how much time we spend doing certain things, and certain certain of us feel like we are past time, certain, certain of us feel like our life has passed us by. You know, all of those kinds of things, all of those speak to limits that we have placed on ourselves and our lives. So let's break that this morning and watch the love of God. It extends past time. And it, it is eternal. It is never ending, right? That's This is our measurement of the love. It crosses all barriers of race, creed, color, age, and class, right? What is he telling us here? So listen. For those of us who have experienced rejection in any form or fashion, whether it was through racism, whether it was in relationships where you were left, they left you and and went to somebody else, whether it was a job you were on and then you got fired or the people um, pushed you out, whether it was um, someone who they, where they said you aged out and they said you were too old um, and uh, that you didn't fit anymore what was going on, whether it was you, where you were in an environment in a setting where the trends change and they were they're like you um you no longer fit um all of these things if you have experienced rejection in any shape or form um this is what this uh kind of love is speaking concerning um why am i pointing these things out because we have to re um view how we view the love of god um, in reference to how people have treated us. A lot of us will limit his love based on our experience with people, based on our experiences in this lifetime, based on um, painful situations that we have gone through. And this is a point of healing for us to be reminded that this love never expires. This love never goes out of style. His love is never ending. There is no criteria because we know that it is agape. It is unconditional. There is no way you can fail at receiving the love of God. There is nothing that I can do to cause him to stop loving me, nothing at all. I don't care what the list is. I don't care um, if people um, came to tell you that there is something wrong with you. You need to fix this in order for me to deal with you, in order for me to love you, in order for me to accept you. You need to uh, fix this, fix that. That's not God. 
So let's um, take the limits off of how we view him. God is not like man. Man deals with these limitations. Man will put these limitations in place because they want to make us more manageable. But how many of you know that God is our father and our creator? There is no reason for him to put uh, limitations on you. There's no reason for him to make you more manageable because he created you. You were created in his image, and so therefore he loves you because you are his, point blank and period. So that was the breadth of it, which is the width, how big his love is for us. The length of his love it's continuous from everlasting to everlasting. It is hard for us to imagine what eternity is like. It is never ending. It never stops, as I said before. And so is this measurement of the love of God. The worst scenario you could ever imagine will not stop, will not cause it to stop. It will never dry up. It will, you know how people um, in relationships, they, they say they've gone apart or they started off in love and now they don't love each other anymore. Once again, this is not God. There is no limit. It will never dry up. It will never come to an end. It will never be depleted. His love, the length of his love is that it's continuous from everlasting to everlasting, the depth of it. I love talking about the depth because it talks about how deep it goes, right? I'm all about the, the deep, the deep calling to the deep, how a thing being rooted because the, the, the deeper down the root, if a, a thing is rooted um, deep down in the earth, it is hard for that thing to be yanked up. It's hard um, for that thing uh, to be blown away by life circumstance. When your roots grow deep, you grow tall and you grow strong because that indicates um, a sturdiness, that the foundation is sturdy. That indicates a solid and a faithfulness. That in indicates consistency. So the depth of the love of God or how deep it goes, it's stooping to the lowest condition with a design to relieve, Lord have mercy, and save those who have sunk into the depths of sin and misery. I'm going to stay right there for a second. The Bible says, uh, David said it in one portion of scripture. He said, if I make my bed in hell, you are still there with me, right? That means that it doesn't matter what I've done, how far I've fallen, how fast I've fallen, how long I stay falling. It doesn't matter the worst thing that I can do, the, 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 the lowest um, that I've gone in my lifetime, the wrong decisions that were made, actions um, that I've done that were very low. Uh, it doesn't matter how low I stooped in my actions and my thinking and my dealings, right? It does not matter what I've done to the depth of the magnitude, to the depth of how it affected my life, um, to, to how deep the brokenness um, of my life became because of bad decisions. As low as we have gotten and as low as we can get in sin, the love of God can reach down there wherever we are. And this is for anyone who has joined us on the call this morning, just to remind you, and anyone who's going to be joining us on the replay, the enemy will fight us because of our failures and try to make us believe that God also is judging our failure and that he's not going to love us anymore. I'm challenging that. That's a lie. We're, we're learning right here, being reminded that the love of God will go where, wherever you are. Uh, uh, um, Evelyn Aggie Turnquist uh, recorded a song, if, you have to, if he has to reach way down, Jesus will pick you up. It does not matter how far we've fallen. He will pick us up. His love never fails. Um, by its height, it's entitling and raising us up to the heavenly happiness and glory. What does that mean? Now, this is the challenge for us. 
um, concerning the height of the love of God, how high um, it goes. This is a challenge for us right now to begin to reach higher um, in our relationships. It is time for us to not climb. It's time for us to reach. It's time for us to dig deep now and really dig in concerning our relationships, concerning developing a stronger relationship, a face-to-face relationship, a more faithful, of us being more faithful in our relation. It's time for us to go higher now in higher heights, and it's time for us to go deeper depths um, spiritually. And it starts with um, our face-to-face relationship with God. What am I saying? Now we um, we understand the, the, the measurements and the dimensions of the love of God for us. Now it is time for us to strive in our love of God for him, right? Because that is when we do this, when we do this, this is an example or a measurement of how our faith, what is going to propel us to dig deep, what is going to propel us to reach higher, what is going to um, propel us to be more consistent is our faith in him. This is the reason why he wants us to raise our thinking and elevate our minds. Y'all remember that congregational song? Elevate your mind and let's go higher in the Lord. There are always higher heights. There are always deeper depths. No matter what God has done, you could have experienced many blessings up to this point in your life. Shake yourself this morning. This is a challenge for us to go higher because we serve a God that is limitless. Okay, let us not put limits on our faith and and, um, who he is and thereby putting limits on who we are in relation to him. So the 19th verse is talking about this challenge. The 19th verse challenges us to know the extent of the love of God by experience, right, or developing a real relationship with him. To understand this love by getting to know him through his word and then to become more confident in his love. And then when we become more confident in his love, that's when we begin to trust him more and we can be more obedient and submissive to his word. So what's the challenge here, Latarsha? What's the challenge here this morning? What am I saying? When my faith in God increases, um, my faith will increase through my view of him. My view increases when I um, allow him to be God through my experience with him. So what is my challenge? My challenge is to allow God to be God to allow God to be God in areas that I have not allowed him before. Some of us have cutoffs. Remember, we're talking about limitless. We're talking about no boundaries. But there are places in our lives where we do not allow him to take full control. Okay, so this is a challenge for us this morning. There are places in our lives where we don't allow God to come in. We want to handle these things ourselves, or we think it's too ugly. We think it's too deep. We think it's too much, and we're carrying it. So this morning, you got to release that. Um, He wants to come into those places. It is our faith that will allow us to submit to him and whatever he wants to do um, because he has wonderful, great intentions for our lives. But this is where our faith is challenged, right? And if the only way my faith can be increased is if I get in his word, right? We can never take, you will always hear me say, I'm always revisiting the word with fresh eyes. No matter how many times I preached or taught or heard um, a scripture, I'm, always, I'm, I'm never taking for granted that, oh, I, I heard that the Lord is my shepherd. Oh, okay, I know what that means. Because he will always, the word is a living thing. The word is a living organism. He will always give us a fresh view um, to help us to know what he wants us to know and how he wants us to walk this walk. So it's through his word that we get to know him and to understand his love. And then we can become submitted when we are confident. It, ladies, for those of you who have a man, 
understand that you know this man is going to take care of you. You already you have the confidence. You've experienced this man has shown himself. This man has proven himself. Now, at this point in your relationship, you already know he got this. You can relax, right? This is where we relax because we know we can depend on him to take care of us. This is the place God wants all of us to be in with him. He wants us to be. He doesn't only want us to know that he loves us. He doesn't only want us to understand that his love is limitless, but he wants us to come into a place where we are so confident in this love that we rest in it, right? That we that will allow us to be more submissive and obedient because we're so confident we know he got it. We rest in it. We won't wrestle with situations. We won't wrestle with people. We won't wrestle with things when we understand and we rest in and become confident in the love of God. We want our love now to match his limitless love for us. So then there should be a desire for us to comprehend this kind of love, to understand it. And it and so that it since we know that that's a part of his nature, we know that it will be also become a part of our nature, our understanding and confidence in his love should equal, oh my God, the dimensions of his love, right? Our understanding and confidence should match those same dimensions, for then we will rest in and have confidence of the love of Christ. Why am I so excited about this? You know why? Because what begins to happen is when we, uh, when, when our love and our view of this love matches it and we understand the extent of it, now what happens is we tap into the real power. The power of God becomes active activated in our lives. Whatever he intends for us now, he will um he has free reign to do that. He has free reign to move in our lives. Once we take the limitations off, once we release these boundaries, right? Once we shatter that glass and open up those doors that we have um shut shut him out by, then now we can experience the real power of God because that takes us to the 20th verse. We know this scripture real good. Um, Now to him who, by in the consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do so. We know, like I said, the scripture as him being exceedingly abundantly, uh, him being able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power, his power that is at work in us. I want to kind of um, dissect that verse a little bit. In consequence of the action of his power, now to him, right, that is at work within us. Again, watch this. If we understand the fullness, because this, um, the verses of scripture that we have discussed is really talking about the fullness of God um, in operation in our lives. The, in starting with reminding us about the fullness of his love, limitless love, limitless power, right? If you want to sum up everything we talked about this morning, limitless love equals limitless power. Since I know that his love is limitless, then whatever he that comes along with him is also limitless. So now my love for him has to become limitless so that I can flow in this limitless power. Then I will begin to believe that um, that limitless power is also working in us. You, do you not know how many times we have kind of cut off our own blessing or the move of God because we stop short or stop God short of our faith and our belief in him? He wants us to remove those boundaries and those limitations. He wants to be able to carry out the purpose to do exceedingly and abundantly. I'm going to challenge those who, who are listening this morning. Um, Get somewhere today, get in a quiet place, pull out whatever you write in. If you're journaling, piece of paper, pen, what I want you to do is go back and revisit every dream, every vision, every idea, every concept, stuff you put on the shelf, stuff you um, 
said was impossible, um, things that you daydreamed about and you just left it there as a daydream. You didn't do anything about it. What I want you to do this morning is go back and revisit all of those things. Right, And I want you to go with this knowledge of what we discussed this morning and to take that back to the throne room in prayer and watch God give you a fresh, a refreshed view and a renewed fire and a renewed passion. And now he's going to add strategy because that is what the 20th verse is talking about. Now he's going to give you strategy. Now it's going to become more tangible to you. Now it's not just the dream. Now it's not just a daydream. He's actually going to um, show you how to put that thing into motion. So now he's, he's showing us how to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can dare to ask or think beyond our highest prayers, beyond our highest desires, beyond our hopes, beyond our dreams. So here, um, um, remember, we're talking about Paul is the writer. And um, just to remind you, actually, Paul, this was a part of the prayer Paul was praying for the Gentiles, um, for them to get to understand their place and position with God. So the 20th verse reinforces the power of God that rests in us and works in our lives, which is just as limitless as his love. So here Paul, right, reminds them of the power of God and the glory um, that is there. Um, He wanted us to understand um, he want, he described how God um, is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, and then um, how inexhaustible the fullness of the grace and mercy of God is, that no matter how often we pray or ask or need, none of it will be depleted. No matter how many times we go back and dip in that thing, dip into his love, dip into the power, it can never be depleted. So with the knowledge the Bible tells us in Hebrews 10, come before my throne boldly. We can come before him boldly. Once we remember our position with him, we come boldly. We don't have to be meek in our request. We don't have to water down our request. We don't have to minimize our prayers. Okay, we don't have to bargain with God. We don't have to beg him. He said, come boldly before my throne. Whatever we may ask, whatever we think to ask, whatever is not imagination, um, still, God is still able to do. I don't care how long ago it was that you dreamed the dream. He's still able to do more than we can dream, abundantly more, exceedingly more. So now it's time for us to open our mouths and however wide we can open it. What that means is for how, how what however much stuff you can ask, it's going to say open wide thy mouth and I will fill it. That means that for whatever you can ask, he's going to grant it unto you with more and excess of your request. So open mind, your open wide your mouth. Make your request known. If you if if pain sometimes the pain of failure will shut our mouths. So again this morning, we're gonna open our mouths again and begin to um request and, and pray for and 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 supplicate and declare and decree all of the things we had gotten shut down from that before because we ran into roadblocks and uh we stumbled and we fell and all of these things and we experience failure. But this morning, um, and we're getting ready to pray in about a minute, we're going to open our mouths wide again so that God can fill it. Now, in our view of God, in our approach to God, in our conversation with and about God, our faith in God should be encouraged by our personal experience and our face-to-face knowledge of his all-sufficient power and his almighty power. This is talking about according to the power which worketh in us. We have already, we already have the proof of the power of God when he gave us his son and when he um, brought us salvation through the redeeming blood of his son. That's the proof of his power. Right? When he granted us salvation and the indwelling of his spirit, 
um, now he has quickened us, the same, the Bible said, the same spirit that quickened our Lord and Savior and raised him from the dead. Now that same power quickens our mortal body. So that same power now is quickening us um, by his grace and converting us to himself. God has given us his fullness, and that is what is working in us. You have to believe and know. This is for someone listening this morning who have, who has given up or who has been operating in complacency and mediocrity. Shake yourself and remember who you are. View yourself the way he views you, right? God has given us the fullness of his power. There is no, he hasn't tapered off, it's not measured off. And that is what is working in us. If you belong to him, if he is in you, the full and his fullness is at work in you. Our faith in him needs to match or equal the fullness he gives us to experience his power. Right now, I am ready to pray. And once again, as we move forward in prayer, go back and snatch those things that you um, threw to the wayside that you gave up on. Um, Go back and snatch those things and bring them back to the throne room uh, because God wants to make those things happen. He wants to breathe life into those things and establish these things. And the reason he's doing this and the reason he's challenging us and waking us up and shaking us now is because his kingdom needs to be established in this earth. And guess what? We are all, we have all been selected um, to be a part of the building of the kingdom of God. So this morning, our challenge is to match the nature of God's intent, the consistency for us to be fully persuaded that God is able to do that which he has promised. And so now let us pray. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise. We are so excited this morning uh, concerning the focus that you have given us. God, we are encouraged. We are strengthened. We are humbled, Lord God, that you have elected us a people who were not a people. Hallelujah. You have elected us and you have chosen us to be a part of your family. You have chosen us to experience your limitless, never-ending, abounding love. And we are grateful and humbled this morning. It is in your presence, God, that we submit ourselves, that we come humble and we come low. First, God, we ask for forgiveness that we for anything that we have done or said that's outside of your will, outside of your word, and outside of your plan. Lord God, purge us with hyssop, creating us a clean heart, renewing us a right spirit. If there's in any way we have misrepresented your character as being your sons and daughters, forgive us, O oh God, because you have reminded us this morning of who we are. You called us a royal priesthood and a righteous nation. We are kingdom kids. Glory to God, and we are going to conduct ourselves accordingly, and we give you glory. We honor you for that this morning. God, we are a people. We hunger and thirst after you, God. We running after you, God. We need you, oh God. Uh, We desire to do what you have called us to do. We desire to be what you have called us to be, but we cannot do it without you. So for this reason, we look to the hills this morning from which cometh our help because we know that all of our help comes from you. This morning, holy God, Father, help us to know that you have given us the challenge of choosing to believe for the big. You have challenged us this morning to believe for what's impossible. You have challenged us to believe for what's fantastic, the the unimaginable thing, oh God. And now you have come into agreement with us. And now we're coming into agreement with you about what happens next. We know that the strategy, you have given us the dream, the vision, but the strategy will come from you. We we failed before because we leaned to our own understanding. We thought we had the formula. We thought we knew. But now we understand, God, that you have the strategy. Not only have you given it to us on what to dream and what uh, to establish on the thing, but now you're giving us the strategy according to the power, your, the fullness of your power that works in us and that you have come into agreement with this big, impossible 
fantastic, out of this world um, dream. Hallelujah. God, you have given for us to know and understand that this is not just an empty promise. It is true that you are a God who does not lie. You are not a man that you should lie, that nor the son of man that you should repent. If you said it, you're going to do it. If you spoke it, you will bring it to pass. You are a God of miracles, and there's no way that we could walk in relationship, hallelujah, with you. There's no way we could hang out with you, Jesus. There is no way, hallelujah, that we would be your people and fellowship and sup with you and walk with you as long as we have and not be overdue scheduled for a miracle. We give you glory because we know that this is the appointed time for the miracle, hallelujah, to be presented. Our breakthrough is here. You love to do the impossible. It is your good pleasure, hallelujah, to bless your people. And when we believe in the big, when we believe in the impossible, when we believe in the fantastic thing, all of heaven comes in agreement. We are not in this alone, but all of heaven is in agreement with us. So now, Father, we believe for the big, the impossible, the fantastic. We believe for that thing. We believe for that dream that is beyond our natural understanding and ability. We believe for what seems to be impossible to everyone else. Father God, shut our ears to the naysayers. Shut our ears to the doubters. Help us to put them out of the room, oh God. Shut our ears this morning. Holy God, thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Shut our ears um, to the haters this morning, oh God. We believe for it because it will glorify our God and bring about your kingdom on this earth. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, because we know you are listening and that your hand is ready to release and send that which is exceeding and abundantly more than we could ask or think. Yeah, we know we uh, experience challenges, glory to God, and that we're gonna, our faith is going to be tested. For this is what the, is the ground through which you take us. This is the way you take us from glory. You told us the other week that this is the vehicle by our challenges and our storms and those obstacles is the vehicle in which you take us from glory to glory and from faith to faith. Glory to God. Bring us um, to the appointed time, uh, to, to the complete manifestation, God, of your goodness beyond our anticipation. We know we will face challenges and obstacles, but we will not give up because our faith has been strengthened this morning. Our faith has been renewed this morning. Our, we're, we're allowing our faith to be built up in your most in, in the Holy Ghost this morning. God, we're allowing our faith to expand, to match your fullness and of your power. The fullness of our faith, God, begins to match the fullness of your love and your power. Father, for this reason, we're going to keep believing. Hallelujah. We're going to keep speaking faith. God, we're going to keep taking steps of obedience. We're going to con continue to submit ourselves to your word. We, for we know and have confidence that you are with us and that you are for us. And if God be for us, then who or what can prevail against us? Who can win against us? We know, understand, and believe that you are working behind the scenes. We are encouraged to know that you are working behind the scenes to bring every dream and vision to pass. You are working behind the scenes to breathe life into every notion, idea, concept, and for this we Thank you. Um, for all of these things, God, we are grateful and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. We are excited um, about today's prayer focus. We once again thank you all who have joined us this morning. Um, be encouraged and be challenged to go back and pick that thing up. And this time with a fresh eye, remember that the love of God and the power of God are limitless, and so our faith should be. Have an amazing and blessed day.